hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. Before we get started, we want to do a special shout out to our sponsor, CarsDeVillies.com. Go to CarsDeVillies.com if you want to look for those shiny foils. The the foils previously owned by Max, Mr. Foils himself, <laughs> are now in stock, or at least they were in stock. Things like Max foils tend to so, uh, sell out really quickly, so go ahead and check them out right away. Cards Vivo is so popular, they sell out immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, news this week. We'll start off with that real quick before we talk about the fanfare, which is the big talk of the town. Uh, we The Octagon Open just started. Now, Sam, how'd you do on your first uh, matchup? I am 1-0 in the mirror match. Not, mirror match, okay. Uh, weird mirror match, normal mirror match? The... Uh... Like, why in the world is this person playing the same deck I am? <laughs> like, one of the same like, prime specials, and they somehow were on the same page. Like a one in, f- f- I don't know. If, if I had to put the odds of of the other person playing the same deck, and I'm trying to think about all the decks that are in constructed right now, I'd say one in like forty. That's that's impressive, especially knowing the kind of decks you've been playing lately. <laughs> yes, and it was it was a card for card. Maybe we we're like three cards off, and we both come up with our own list. Jeez. So. It was interesting. Do you, do you know who it was? Uh, I don't remember his name. Oh, unfortunately. Uh, nice fellow. <laughs> <laughs> nice fellow. <laughs> a, a, a nice fellow. <laughs> I, think, I think it's John. Uh, I can't remember his Helps. name. Helps. Helps immensely. John, John Serta from the Netherlands. That's who it was. Okay, interesting. So, so, shout out to him. Super cool guy. <laughs> Super cool guy. But he is planning on running it. Uh, the deck. I, I'm not planning on running the deck necessarily for the petite cup but he is planning on running it for the um what is it the ice cup there over there the crystal cup oh okay like, so to start yeah that. that's crazy yeah the, their events actually coming up pretty soon i think but he's planning on running it so i don't want to no that, uh, yeah kind of sh- for sure shout yeah. out what he's playing so makes sense to me and then this weekend we have uh to look forward to not only one but two petite cups uh one in new york at uh the uncommons new york city on the 16th and then at Harry Tarantula in uh, Toronto on the 17th. Uh, I'm pretty excited to have two events in one weekend. It's been a while since we've had, I think, back-to-back events like that that were, you know, bigger than, like, a local level. Uh, it would be cool to be actually watching a stream, too, because <laughs> the last few events I've actually been at. And uh, Well, do we know that it's being streamed? Well, I, I'm happily assuming that they'll be streamed. <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't know if that's a good assumption. I don't think the Arizona one was streamed. The which one? The Arizona one. Was it not? Oh. No. Hmm. No. And I haven't heard anything from anyone about these ones being streamed. I don't think they are. Ooh, that's unfortunate. All right. Well, I, I'm just going to hope <laughs> that they will be. <laughs> Ignorance but, is bliss. Yeah, yeah. At times, for sure. <laughs> and then uh, and then the following week, we'll have the RVA. So we got a whole stack couple of weeks coming up. It's pretty excited. It's pretty sweet. More results, more deck lists, hopefully some more uh, sweet pepper decks. <laughs> I always like when there's like big events or multiple events like the week before my event uh, mm-hmm. helps me train against the decks and you know that people are going to audible to whatever like one oh, yeah. of the latest things so for sure fantastic <laughs> the best <laughs> oh yeah absolutely uh, so this past weekend you guys attended the fan fest uh, in Los Angeles so uh, how was it to be back in California uh, Sam I'll start with you uh, I had a good time. I was, you know, when I, when I landed, it was nice and cool outside, which was fantastic. It was weird. Um, yeah. yeah it, it, I expected like the same weather in Florida. Um, it's, it's really hot here actually. Right. We actually, so it was, yeah, it was we nice got, to have like a breeze. Yeah. We got back. It was so humid. I was like, oh my gosh. And it was so warm and like down <laughs> or down there over there. It was, uh, I was wearing long pants and sweatshirt most of the time. It was weird. I was surprised. Yeah, it was it was interesting because the it was at the same hotel mm-hmm. um, slash venue basically as it was for nationals and every other event I guess really over there, <laughs> um, which was which was kind of cool because when you walked in and you know you, we looked up to the left. I was with Will. Uh, I traveled with uh, Will there, and you walk and you look up to the left and you just see all like the players playing along those tables, as you know those who attended nationals can t- can contest on the second floor. Just interesting just to see that. Yeah, it felt very familiar and very kind of how we talk about going to Kansas City where it feels like a second home almost. Like that hotel is very familiar now and it's it's comfortable. It's, it's eh, nice. 
Kansas is a lot better. Oh, I, I, <laughs> hey, I didn't say it was better than Kansas. I just said it's familiar at least now. Uh, yeah. it's, it's like a third home kind of. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice hotel. Um, it's a, it's a nice venue. It's a nice venue. And I, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about some. Uh, actually, I guess we can talk about it now. I want more space. Uh, yeah, has, I was going to say it has its limitations as far as space. I believe they're the amount of people that they can have in that room has to be like under 150 or something. Something like um, that. And I wish like it's very convenient to be able to stay at a venue so you can go upstairs, get your cards, leave your stuff in the room. You only have to bring down a deck box at a time, that kind of thing. If you want to go get cards signed, you don't have to carry it all around, but you can still bring like everything like I do. But I would prefer to have more space in, with more inconvenient travel, if that makes sense. Like if we could have a venue that supports 200, 250, 300 people, or even like grand prix size uh, for magic with like 500 people plus, that'd be amazing, but still not quite that scale yet. Um, yeah. I think I could agree with that. I think and, that exactly that. I think that I really enjoy staying at the venue, but yeah, if, if they had a venue that could hold more people, so we didn't have to have a sold out event so quickly, then I would be much happier with that. I, w I wonder if they would explore something like, you know, whenever I've gone to like a GP, like overseas, like a like GP Costa Rica, for example, like the hotel there was like $60 a night and it was on the same venue as the GP Sweet. and traveling everywhere was like super cheap. I almost feel like they should explore a crystal cup in uh, an area where it doesn't even play final fantasy uh, <laughs> like oh, yeah. Costa Rica. Cause I feel like it's actually cheaper to travel to Costa Rica than it is for me to fly anywhere else. Like for sure, it's cheaper for me to fly to Costa Rica than it is to fly to California or Kansas or anywhere else. I think the only issue is passports, uh, logistically for people to go. But I mean, yeah, that's fair. If it's only no, one event, fair. like once a year, that's fine. Uh, also, I would go so far as to say I think part of the issue with why they use the same place all the time is there's got to be some kind of deal, right? Like they have something with the Hilton that uh, they know there's going to be an event every year at <clears throat> this time or around this time, yeah. and they have the spot laid out. But, I don't know. I don't. I don't really want to speculate. But well, you're right. I, but then, and I was also thinking, based on the pricing and stuff, they're not making a lot of money off the players there, mm -hmm. except in like the merch store. I would be willing to give up over half of the pricing, at least, if it would mean that they could get a larger venue for everybody. If like that's factored into the cost of like you know they give out all these crazy like statues and figurines and swag and stuff, I'd take a fraction of that if it just meant we could have a bigger event with more people. Uh, was it the same ballroom that we had yes. last nationals in? Okay. Just because I know the first year we had Nets there, uh, they had a larger ballroom in the on the first floor. Because mm -hmm. they had like 200 so people want... the first Nets, right? Right, yeah. yeah. And it was like very much more spacious than this past year. So maybe they could consider going to that ballroom again because that can accommodate more players. Mm -hmm. That would be nice for uh, sure. Um, but yeah, so let's jump into some of the events that you guys participated in. Um, so first up, we got the team event. Which you guys participated on a team of three briefly. Uh, so, that <laughs> so well, as I say that. briefly, uh, I I enjoy the format a lot. I love the idea of playing side by side with teammates, and you have to. I like the intricacies of building like a world's format deckless set. You know, the three decks that don't share more than three uh, copies of the same card across all three. And I just there's a couple criticisms I have. One would be I wish there was communication between teammates. Uh, once you sat down and discussed uh, essentially just like pregame stuff, like you couldn't even discuss mulligans. Uh, you had it like it was just one on one. You're by yourself. So I'd like a little more interaction. Like maybe increase the timer to like 40 minutes to accommodate for that. Uh, just because yeah. it is a special format. I'm gonna second that and but also leave it at leave it at that. I think that people should just be able to discuss mulligans. Um, they know matchups. It's important that part of communication, but I don't think that people should be able to discuss during the match because time is an issue. I could be convinced of that. I just I do like in Magic when they do like unified modern where they can kind of discuss plays here and there. But that would lead to maybe the middle person playing the decks, which I understand is an issue. Uh, but then also there were multiple round one buys. Multiple, yeah. Multiple, like four or five, I would dare to say. Like, we had to play round one. There were some teams that didn't play round one at all, and then were paired up with another team that didn't play round one at all. And then other like teams... Two, two Worlds competitors on that team. <laughs> yeah, and then and then t three of the matches in the second bracket were filled by the people who played in the first. It was bizarre, because they didn't have all 32 teams. They wanted a perfect bracket. So they didn't adjust it at all. So I think 
while single elimination for I understand it was a time concern thing, it was not good for the format or for player morale. Uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty. It's it, it, go, it goes against everything within my within the frame of who I am <laughs> to have a single elimination tournament where multiple teams get buys. Yeah. So like I it, wish it's they not would enough that it. if you lose once you're out, but some of the people didn't even have to play that round. Yeah, and like. I can understand again because of time concerns, they have to have it, you know, a certain number of rounds. But at the same time, because there, there were, were so few there teams, were you could still, you could still Swiss that. it. Like you still do Swiss, and each time slot for every round was an hour, if I'm not mistaken. The round timers were a half hour, so I don't know what is happening during that extra time. But if they could shorten whatever in between is by 15 minutes, you can squeeze in an extra round or two across the day, and then you could do Swiss and cut to top four or whatever out of like yeah you had you had teams who were finishing their round that would run over and do a random battle and mm -hmm. finish a, a round there or two rounds there and then go back to their team of it yeah so i think it could be a little more streamlined and the format could be improved uh but that's where i'm gonna <laughs> not rant too much about it yeah i would say that it was fun um there were some there were some big issues like one of the things is like for example the teams that got buys got to just stand there and watch your match so they knew the exact matchups and so if they won the die roll they could see they could place their team exactly how they wanted based on matchup that's the other thing so the way they did it was uh your teams would roll off and whoever got the higher roll chooses their team or the opposing team to sit first so you always pick the other team and they're they'll sit whoever they want in the first seat, then you sit yours across from them, and then it continues. I think having it always be the other team first was a mistake because you literally, if you win the die roll, you win the matchup war if you know the matchups. Oh, absolutely. So It's the, pretty absurd that they don't no alternate. Play. There was no counterplay. The yeah, the three people get to choose their three matchups and the three people that they're playing against. They can put the strongest against the weakest. They can whatever they think is going to work. And, and they Player also, base or match because even match if you base. switch it, it's still this team gets to pick two and the other team gets to pick one. But at least there's something the other team gets. Whereas in this case, there was nothing. <laughs> well, no, you would you would do first pick and then the second person gets second and third pick. So you get to okay. pick the first matchup and then they get to pick the other two or something. So like that, yeah. that's at least pr is about as even as you're going to get. But it is pretty even. Right. Um, but the way they did it, you could literally, after the first round, stack it up like, oh, I know he's on this deck and I can beat that every time. I'm here. Now, okay. teammates over here. But yeah, it was. Before going any further with the cast, I do want to put in a little a little side note here. The fanfare was supposed to be a fun event for uh, people, not necessarily a competitive event. Uh, in my eyes, that part was a failure. And I will go on to the I will go on to the reasons why we'll talk about it. Um but to keep in mind that for the team event, a lot of the things that we're complaining about aren't necessarily a big deal if it's just a casual um, right, right, event. Sure. That being said, of course, you know uh, when you get to the finals and, and the winner, the, the winners got pretty decent tr uh, glass trophy. They got you know, the A zero O two promo, which is Japanese. It's like the cloud promo, but with Fury on an Emperor. Very impossible to find. So to expect that type of tournament to be casual um will come with his own slew of problems yep. um so the things that we're mentioning are probably okay if it's casual i mean i think that if multiple teams got buys even in the casual event that's not really that acceptable um but yeah we'll, we'll continue going i just i just want to point that out that to keep in mind that this is from our perspective where zach and i are both pretty competitive players um as was almost every person in the room. I'm definitely going to go more into that later. Oh, yeah. Our, our um, first round opponents were, what, Nathan Perez and Azul? Or, and, uh, or uh, not Azul. Um, Arvin? <laughs> yeah. So, like, we had two killers, and then we didn't rec we didn't know their friend. But, like, they weren't easy <laughs> rounds. Then one of them was, like, Brian Berkeley, Okimoto, and somebody else. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and to Zach. talk a little bit about the actual event, um, Zach played Mono Lightning very uncomfortably, but, you know, did very well with it. Um, then I played a very comfortable deck in Earthwind, and... and Muhammad played a very comfortable deck in Mono Water, and I got backup screwed at having two backups. And then you know, uh, I I played against the the famous uh, <laughs> discard ice ice wind deck that he he likes to play, um, which was fine. It was a <laughs> it was a fine game. I mean, there was nothing I could do. I, I never got a second backup. Whereas Muhammad got in the situation where if he draws any forward for like five turns, he'll win the game, and literally just just drew backup. Pusoya, like Pusoya, I looked at it one, Yuna, yeah. Move, Yuna, Waka, always absurd. Yeah. 
I like like I knew Zach had won. I knew that I was still on two backups. My opponent was on five with like five forwards, so I was losing. I looked over at Mahab and I'm like, all right, well at least we're making it to the next round. And like, there's no two, way he's he on five. Oh my god. Yeah, and he's got Fasoya. He's got everything locked up, and it just proceeds to break, completely break. break, break, break. Yeah. Break. Um, yeah. So that that was our quick exit, and uh, and you, know, you can't complain immediately... about that variance like as much as like it's not like we. Like, like we're yeah, mad at yeah, the variants, not we're in, not mad at the in, opponents or anything like that. It's just no, not at all. And but like in single elimination, enough. like that's it sucks that it was it was a competitive match, whether it was meant to be or not. In single elimination, and then we got a little bit variance out. Not to say they didn't play well; they did play very well. Um, but you could say they played well and still got very lucky. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, you could see on Arvin's face he was feeling it because at one point he got his board basically wiped. And he had to draw oh, yeah. like forward, 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 and put the pressure on. And Muhammad's sitting there with these giant knights that he can't get through. And <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, one more forward would have been the game, right? Because Arvin's forwards were things like time mage that were like doling and freezing. Yeah, four and five k. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so that that's basically how the team event went. It was, it was a very quick exit. So there was you guys didn't there was no ice on your guys' side. Is that what I'm hearing? No, we ended up. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Yes, that's yes, there was. There were three yes, there ice was, cards. Sir. There were three ice cards. Okay. I played three I played three ice cards in my Earth Wind deck. Yes, you did. All right. I can live with that then. I yeah. <laughs> a little essence uh, of Cody. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. All right. Uh but let's let's uh you actually touched on it a little bit. Uh you talked about the random battles, so mm-hmm. I didn't really know what those were. Um so why don't you guys well, so, basically? So well, yes and no. So random battles is not at all Wolves Den, actually. Wolves Den um, is a very structured event where, you know, the, the, a person goes and stands in the back of the line and keeps going. This was more like sit down across from a random or your friend who may or may not concede to you anyway <laughs> um, and play out your battle, you know? So I, I guess, again, again, so the, the reason I preface this with that we this was a casual event was... We, we are very familiar with the prizes for things like Wolves Den. We know that there's some big prizes on the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know what I was going for. I was planning on just getting a stamp and then moving on. Um, but I won my first four matches in a row. So I figured, you know what? Let's just go for most wins. Okay? I'm going to grind this out as much as possible. Now, Zach can attest to the fact that I didn't leave. I didn't get lunch. I didn't take a break. I sat at the table and was grinding all the time. I went 21 and one. I lost one match. Was grinding the whole time and still somehow managed to tie for most wins. So anyway, without (laughs) even going further into that, I'll just say this. They absolutely need to eliminate most wins and most losses. And they also, from yeah, this they're... event, like it's absolutely not acceptable to have some of the biggest prizes be for these two things, which are the easiest to cheat the system for. It's just, it's just not okay in my opinion. Um, well, yes, it was a casual event, but it, we have to move away from those things, and we we need to move into a a judge system where the judge pays a lot more attention. They they have to have a line. Uh, less tables to for people to go sit down at because what was happening is you could just say hey I'll play you hey I'll play you hey I'll play you the same the same game in a row you know you could play yeah. the same person twelve times in a row then the judge would just sign off on it, it didn't matter so they they were was, so busy they couldn't really care about it like they had to just like oh you played they again? didn't cool. they didn't care about it is 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 a point they knew that it was happening there's a point where I was like I'm sitting across from Madison and I'm like. Okay, well, let's go find someone else to play. The judge is like, oh, you can just play each other again. It doesn't matter. The judge literally said that. I'm like, well, you know, for the integrity of the event, let me see if there's anyone else. Nope, nobody else. I guess I'll just play against Madison again, <laughs> you know, and then I play against Will. And then I and then I finally found some random dude who was really awesome. He's one of the few people over from Mexico. Um, he was playing this really cool deck. But but that that's the kind of thing that happened. You could just play the same person over and over. And I have no doubt that that was happening quite a bit. Not to mention that, like, at least in my games, we were playing it out. So you could just can theoretically go concede, move to a different table, concede again, move and get most losses. And there was nothing that would happen to you if you did this. Now it's a casual event, but it's still not okay. Again, I would like to see pricing, getting a, competitive prize for casual. Event, yes. Which is the, yes. Only so yeah. they need to get rid of most wins and most losses. The other things are really fun. 
I helped build, uh, Zach helped us out to build a Viking deck for uh, Mohammed to win the most Viking breaks. Then we played a game, and that was a fun <laughs> idea. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Even if we built a deck just for that, other people might have done the same thing. And so to have that happen is really cool. So to, to, you're actually trying to achieve something. Most cards removed from the game. Now, Zach's going to be a little salty about this, but... Either way, it's cool that there's this, uh, there's this type of uh, interaction that happens where two people can compete for the same prize that aren't they don't get to see each other and they don't get to see where the other person's at. You know, yeah, I, I was sort of in this similar thing, but I had no number to go by. I only knew the numbers of wins that I had. I didn't know who, who else had that many wins. I knew that nobody else had sat the whole time. Nobody else had gone 21 and 1. You know, so I figured that I was the only person or would have taken right. first, but that wasn't the case, apparently. Um, like I said, I literally didn't leave to go get lunch. I sat there for, what was it, five hours, six hours, <laughs> and just grinded matches. And it was cool, you know, you know, eventually, even though they didn't even initially announce that I won, they announced someone else. And I was like, hold on, I also have that many, or maybe you guys read the wrong name, what's going on? And so... They, they eventually did give me a prize, which was really cool. It was a play arts like uh, dragon, uh, dragon like fourteen character, which I know James is really into. So I was able to give it to him. Um, so it was really cool. I'm just saying that, you know, they have to fix those things last year, next year. Yeah. Now the, the other problem is 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 that in multiple multiple times I've seen the wolves den, and multiple times at different events, including here. It's never clear whether or okay, let me just say it's always clear to myself and a lot of other players that um that the what the records you're going for are cumulative, as in that they stack up between rounds, unless, for example, the Viking one said in a single game. So it's pretty clear. However, when someone like Zach asks for confirmation from three different judges and all three told him no, it's in one game when he's going for the most cards removed from the game, then Zach has a feels bad where he went for this achievement, thought that he had it locked up and then was destroyed by like hundreds and hundreds of more cards removed from the game because someone was James Lockwood was doing it the entire event. And like, if I kept track, I easily would have crushed him. I was, I was removing 30 to 40 cards per game. Like it was, it wouldn't have been close. (laughs) But uh, the yeah, the fact that I wasn't cumulative because I asked him in my very first game, I got my record, and then I came close another game. I was one card off, but like I was like, okay, I just let this one ride. I'm like, oh cool, fifty one still. Yep, fifty one still, fifty one still. And I just never wrote down the new numbers. I just wrote it up each game and then crossed it out because it wasn't like a a new record because I was told right. to not do it cumulatively. Which I agree, grammatically on the sign, it would imply that it's across all games. But because I know that people don't always think of it as being, you know, Zach's the kind of person. Implied. Zach's the kind of person that will double check on things that doesn't make any sense. He should just know that it works that way. And then in this case, he tried to do the right thing by doing this double check, and it backfired by him being told the wrong answer. Yeah, and it also wasn't clear if it was both my cards and my opponent's cards, so I clarified that as well. They said both, so I'm like, okay. But yeah, I mean, it's whatever. But again casual thing very fun i love doing those challenges my deck was sweet i ended up actually editing a little bit and playing it for real like a like an actual playable version of it and then when you put competitive prizing on the line it's a lot worse like those play arts are like what 100 dollars, 150 dollars, 120 somewhere yeah. in there and that's that's no, a I... significant amount to lose out on if you legitimately did a challenge when someone else could i'm not saying obviously i don't think lockwood did this but you could just write down numbers every game and like oh absolutely checking. and yeah absolutely not that i think everyone's doing that but i'm sure there's a non-zero number of people that do that at one point someone had claimed to do like 26 chilinka yuri attacks in one game and it's just like wait that literally mathematically can't happen before you deck out yeah like it just can't happen mm-hmm. um so anyway well uh, that's enough about the random battles it was fun <laughs> I think the pricing should stay the same, but that it should be watched a little closer. People should be paired against random people and 100%, please, I've always felt this way, do away with most wins and most losses. There's absolutely no way to stop that from happening because anytime the most wins gets paired against the most losses, there's there's 
tournament consistency, integrity consistency, that's, consistency, that's falling yeah. through. Also, uh, one last quick thing. Please, Square Enix, when you're scheduling events, do not end them early. The random battles ended, what, a uh, half yeah. hour, an hour early almost, because they wanted to prepare more for, like, the, the panel or whatever. But So I was like, are, thank God this is ending are, early. Like, I haven't eaten until well, a week. Well, sure. I'm nauseous. But I've done are... nothing but grind games. I know that no one else has played this many games. And then it's just like, oh, they're ending early? Thank God. Well, for me, it was like, oh, I've got a couple more challenges to try. I want to do some stuff. And then like, oh, yeah, no, we're, we're packing up in, like, five minutes. I'm like, it ends in, like... 40 minutes, what are you talking about? They're like, yeah, we want, we're doing it early. I'm like, it's a one-day event. You only have so much time to do stuff, and you're going to end one of the things early? Like, come on. Uh, right. So it it was sounds, like a, sounds like a very unorganized Wolf's Den. It was, was, yes. yes. Indeed. Okay. okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the, <laughs> uh, the, the quote-unquote new format, which was... The oh, you know what? Hey, you know, hey let's, 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 let's start from the beginning. If I had to rate... Let, let's rate things. I, I want to just give honest feedback here. If okay. the hotel and venue... I know Zach would feel a little differently. I would rate the hotel venue an A+. Oh, I think for that sure. the venue's it's great. great. I just want more people. Yeah, it has enough space. Has The heating... Uh, no, I'll give it an A-. It was hot in there. The AC was broken. That There's nothing that Square Enix can do about that. But as far as the event goes, you know, they have hot tubs, food pl- food nearby. Yeah, I, I a, a, a- for the team, for that thing. As far as the team event goes, C-. minus. The the in theory it's a great idea. Um, random battles, absolutely an F. Like, I, I do not think that was handled very well. Okay, so now we'll move <laughs> on. <laughs> what about the boss battles? How did that go? It was fun. It was good time. I got destroyed, yeah. but it was fun. So uh, I would like you, to you have get... access to the decks deck lists. Um, you can kind of figure them out by watching the stream over the, the course of the games. Um, also, I wish they had more than one boss battle deck because uh, I guess it didn't For matter sure. which table you set it. It was the same deck, just different difficulties. Like more cards right. would have extra effects depending on if you wanted to fight one, two, or three. But there were the same elements between the two decks, which I was a little disappointed with. So the boss battle decks for those that don't know is a 3v1 deck where basically all the cards do some overpowered things ex burst uh, for example zalera is an ex burst but except for killing all prime numbers that are dull it just kills all prime numbers period you have things like own that are going to break three forwards and ex burst so just take that for what it will everything's very powerful um the problem is is that i think that we all assume that each person that was piloting a boss deck had built their own deck mm-hmm. uh, and so that we'd play against you know multiple different decks we'd see multiple different decks up but that wasn't the case it was one deck with the exception of the dark ford uh that they all started with uh well they started with a few different dark fords besides kageyama started with uh, the emperor um which was cool i mean it, it, it was cool uh you got to choose your difficulty but since the pricing was the same uh, i went with level three difficulty um we did fairly well we got five points um on the boss ended up losing had a good time Mm -hmm. i think the boss battle was a great success but there's always a but i i think that there should have been a lot more boss battles happening i would like to see in the future uh and maybe this was a, a a thing about um you know this is hobby japan square enix first run at it they wanted to be in control of it i get it but I'd love to see like be able to, people to be able to challenge myself or challenge people like Okimoto or Gregory Cole to boss battles where we build our own decks and then they get to come and challenge us. And then, you know, we're given a certain amount of promos that we can hand out or whatever um, based off how they do. Also, I think uh, this isn't just a boss battle thing, but an event thing overall. I don't know that streaming just the boss battle was the right decision. Like, I think... It was cool. We'll, to have we'll get to, we'll get to that. Okay, yeah. we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's actually what we're gonna move right along into uh, is the stream, uh, which since I wasn't there, that was really my only option to be able to experience it outside of like messaging you guys and stuff. Okay, um, so, and, and did you experience it? Uh, just a little bit. Uh, there was a lot of breaks. Like oh, I, was I, there? I, I turned on the stream when I went live, and it was just a break for like 50 minutes yeah i was watching minutes. the vod earlier because i wanted to watch my boss battle because i never i didn't watch it back yet to see what the commentators were saying and yeah the first like 30 minutes of the video is like all just banner yeah and then what i did watch i didn't realize going into the stream i guess because i missed the beginning i didn't realize it was all boss battles which was kind of disappointing um 
I guess it was neat that they had like such a nice stream where like they actually had the three cameras over each player and mm -hmm. then the boss himself. I thought that was cool and it was a pretty good stream. I think they should have put I the think... finals of the team battle and the finals of the uh, title tournament at least on stream. Yeah, yeah, I would have definitely liked to see that. And I think if you're a newer player watching the stream <laughs> and you go into like seeing a boss battle as your first game, like I would have been lost if I was a new player because like it's hard to understand what's going on. Um, I, could, I could see that. But yeah, uh, I think the um, the commentators that I, I think they did fine, um, the break zone guys. Um, but I was just a little disappointed that it was just boss battles. Yeah, that's a good and point. Then, um, I I do feel like I, I agree with the points that the finals of the team and the finals of the um, title title event should have been put on stream. It would have been fun. But they're just going for mostly a casual event. Um, Which I get. I just, like I said, I would like to have, you know, if I were a viewer, I would have liked to see some sure. kind of normal. The, the, the setup is pretty cool. Um, the way the way they had the setup was pretty cool. Uh, I'm disappointed here that there's a bunch of breaks. I would have preferred to see that when one boss battle is over, they switch to another uh, team playing the other boss because there were two boss battles happening at once. Mm -hmm. um, that would have been pretty cool. Yeah, I don't right. think it'd be too difficult to kind of just slide playmats over type thing to get into the feature zone either. And you don't have to move the playmats. Actually, you can just there. They had three set up uh, for the players, and then one like a little bit. I think it's maybe the same size for the boss. It wouldn't have been too hard. Just like shift your cards over real quick. But I mean, well, I guess... theoretically too. So the the they were up on. They had like stands that the cameras were on and stuff. So you'd have to center it, and it might be a little difficult. Theoretically, you could just move the table with the cards on it. Like, just swap out the two tables real quick. You could do that as well, yeah. But, yeah. That sounds a lot. That sounds, that sounds more complicated yeah, than just having an extra yeah. set of cameras. <laughs> I'll say they do have, like, four cameras going at once on that, too. So Right, but not impossible, though. It was definitely... Uh, uh, but, like I said, just I, I would have really enjoyed to see title because I'm not very... I don't really play any title at all, so anytime I get see to watch that high level play, title play, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, I'm always interested in it. So uh, wait, do we know then... which deck won? Did they ever? I know Sharina won, but I don't know what she was playing. Oh, okay, I think she was playing Final Fantasy Tactics. I okay. believe I think the RVA guy said that actually on their podcast. Oh, okay, I would, um, I, I would believe it. Uh, and then at the towards the end of the stream, they had the panel, which unfortunately. Uh, people viewing at home really didn't get to hear anything that was going on. Really? The audio. Yeah, the audio was like completely toned down. You could hardly hear. Oh, that sucks because the panel was probably one of my favorite parts. Um, it was RB funny. did. Yeah, RB did an excellent job. It was really corny, but it was it was cute and like you could tell it was rehearsed, but it was still funny and I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, I, I I would like the questions to be on the spot mm -hmm. but also i thought that they did a really good job um i would rate that if for example if i were rating the panel as, as an a plus like i thought that it was just really funny um the quality was amazing so to hear that it didn't make it to the stream is really sad because i mean they really did a great job um at pumping up and they answered so many questions i i know that rb put out a um a like, like a, a text version of it, right? Uh, I don't know. If, was there a transcript of like what the questions were going to be? I'm almost positive that I know there was like RB... the post where everyone was asking questions, and that's where they were no, taking no, no, from. No, 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 no. RB had a transcript that they were going to post, or that they already did post. Okay. Um, so you can theoretically go and find out everything that was said, but you won't capture the essence and the cuteness of the RB and the Kageyama team uh, battling back and forth between. You know, oh, you're not going to ask me any easy questions, are you? Yeah, Kageyama was... was like, man, you're not asking easy questions. Uh... <laughs> yeah, and there were a lot of tough questions that we were glad to hear answers to. Um, if if we want to talk about some of the pros of the panel, like just hearing that they had given consideration to... I don't want rotation, but to hear that they gave consideration to it, I do want them considering it. Even if there's things that I don't want, I'm glad that they're considering them. I think that it's important that they consider things um, in all aspects of the game to hear how they considered bands, how, how they considered rotation, to hear them talk about like how 
certain mechanics aren't in the game, how certain mechanics were in the game, how some things were too powerful, how they toned things down. You know, for those that didn't know, Layla was a 5,000 power forward, and Nidhogg removed two cards at random from their hand. That was the original printing. And, but it and only broke, broke a guy. It, bro- <laughs> and it broke a guy. And they decided, well, that's that's too broken. We'll remove one and then remove one from the game. Um, <laughs> so there were a lot of cool things. And then we got spoilers. And the spoilers were awesome. They gave away some awesome, awesome spoilers. The only myth one I fell in was Raiden. Uh, the other spoilers were awesome. I can't wait uh, for that Ice Legend. Looks so sweet. It does look pretty cool, yeah. Oh, the fire I, I, probably dark. Dark Fina, I believe, is what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, dark. Fina. That's the first time in the history of this podcast I've remembered a card name that you did not. <laughs> just want to go on. Oh, up. I knew the name. I just didn't say it. I just said the ice. Legend. Oh, that ice legend. Okay, so uh, and then the whole event was just on Saturday, correct? It was. Okay. Actually, um, I will. So... Can I just say one more thing about the stream, though? Uh, I will disagree with Sam on one thing. I wish. I wish. I wish it was not scripted. Like I know you said that you. No, no, you I, I, do, was... I didn't want to be scripted either. I wish that it wasn't, but it was really well done for a scripted event. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I just can, can just, you even argue with that? I mean, it, it was very like I enjoyed it. I agree. It was one of the better run parts of the event. I just it just felt like you said it was corny. I just it was I, cringy. I it was right? cringy. Yeah, yeah, because it, it, was, it was so overly. Like you could, you knew it was choreographed, like in scripted. Yeah, yes, it, but I think it was like made to be like you. You were supposed to know it was choreographed. Does that make sense? I guess I could. Like if yeah. they pretended it wasn't, and the questions weren't asked That's prior, true. yeah, and that you would have got this false sense of, I don't know, fakeness. But I guess I didn't because I knew it was all. artificial, it wasn't as bad. But um, I guess if they try to fake it, it'd be worse. But I, I mean, I just wish, like you said, I wish it was on the spot. So. The, you make him sweat a little <laughs> just like ask a question right up but i i could see the other side of it as there's translation issues and you have to be able to like on the spot you know f- translate everything to english and into japanese and back and forth so like maybe everyone asking the questions directly would take more time and that's their concern i don't know but it was it was good you're crazy i don't, I, I agree it was good i just wish it wasn't scripted <laughs> okay right. so um so you guys was there a community event on sunday or yes. Yeah, so like so together. Spellhold Games held a an event where first place got um wait, Kingdom so Hearts first place got the choice no, first place got the choice between a box or Kingdom Hearts. And the, the other person got the other item. Um so like second place got second choice. Then they also both got white deck boxes, some dice. Uh, and and the cool thing is that they paid out all the way down to top 8. Um even though it was a cut to top four, so it wasn't super field bads to walk away. Um, they ran a really spell. I have to say, the Spellhole Games ran a really cool event. Like, uh, they stopped around so we could all do our Pokemon raid. Um, <laughs> you know, which was which was funny, but it only took five minutes, and we knocked it out together. Um, we were able to raid from the store, which is really cool to be able to do that. Um, and it, they ran a clean, really fun event where. I don't think there are any like major problems that I remember. Nothing uh, went to time too bad. Yeah, I mean it was sweet because it was another day of playing. Uh, that's I, I I wish FanFest was two days, but you know. But then I was a little disappointed that a lot of people talked to us the previous day and said, "Oh yeah, we're definitely coming. We're definitely coming to the oh yeah." Games. There was, like how many people were there? Like thirteen. There were thirteen of us for the second day when like one hundred twenty five for FanFest. Like I get a lot of people had to fly out on uh, Sunday. Yeah, but earlier. so many people said they were gonna go. Like, and, but the yeah. California locals, man, you gotta step up your game because a lot of people were like, "Oh, we're coming out. Yeah, yeah, we'll play a spell there was, tomorrow. We'll there go were if you six go." Of us. Six of us at least that Ubered uh, that left together in an Uber that were from out of town. So almost half of the people that went, no, actually I know that all the people, the that, almost yeah, all yeah. the people that went, <clears throat> almost all the people that went were not local. If you don't include San, uh, this, the San Diego guys, because the San Diego guys also were leaving that day. Um, but a lot of them made it. Unfortunately, Vince didn't, but a lot of the other San Diego guys did. So they ran a great event. Um, oh yeah. The event the, itself was, great like the venue was the, perfect it was all good the other pros are that like i got to hang out with the canadian guys and the san diego guys and it was so cool to go have mexican uh with them after the sunday event one of my favorite parts of the whole event was just talking to those guys um on sunday and so just having uh that event afterwards was fantastic 
I got to play against uh, Dan Wynn, who's one of my favorite people. If you don't know, Dan Wynn is literally probably my favorite player in FFTCG. So getting to play against him for the first time uh, was an honor and a, a privilege and, and a ton of fun and a, and a great game. Um, so that was really cool. Wait, who now, won? Uh, Dan won, and he was playing Moogles. And we played a second game that didn't, we didn't get to finish, but I was very clearly the favorite in that game. So it would have been cool to, to be able to go to a, a best of three and play a third game. Uh, but he played really well, and it was a ton of fun. Uh, but let me ask let me ask this real quick before we move on. Um, you bought a whole bunch of cards from that store, though, right? Yes, yes I did. So can you tell me a little bit? Cause I, I want to know if that was ever resolved. Uh, no. Okay, so... My understanding is 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 Zach bought a whole bunch of cards from them, like uh, like a hundred and ten dollars worth of foils, right? One hundred nineteen, but pennies. Oh, so what happened from there? <laughs> so I. By the way, this is part three of Zach just can't make it out alive. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I was I bought a ton of foils. A lot of them were commons, like you know quarter do- or quarter dollar quarter cards, like not very much. But there was like a starter Sarah in there. It was five bucks. A Pritch Legend from Opus One, that kind of stuff. I was just filling out my play sets. And uh, I made the large purchase of a pile of cards like this tall. And at the end of it, uh, Sam was trying to go get food. And then the event was finishing up. And I was trying to talk to some people. So I was a little distracted. And I said, hey, are these all the cards that I just bought right here? And they said, yes. So I picked up the pile, put it in my deck box. And I just, that was, that was the end of it. But then I got back to the hotel and started sleeving all the cards up and realized there was a chunk of them missing. A uh, large chunk, correctly? Uh about probably 30 cards at least, yeah. But that's uh, a lot of foils. That's a lot of foils. And including the – I was only going to buy one card when I got there, which was a starter Sarah, and that's one of the cards I don't have. <laughs> so that was a little bit of a feel bad. But, yeah, so I messaged them about it, and they're unable to figure out what happened to them. But So do they have cameras? They told me they do not have cameras, and nothing is turned up. Hmm. That's disappointing. I don't think anybody, like any of the players, like took them. I just think I – there was a second pile that I didn't know were mine on the counter because there were a lot they of cards got, and, they got, out, and then and they got tossed back in. They got scooped up somewhere, but like, I, I don't know. Feels yeah, good. I, yeah. Hopefully that, hopefully those turn up because they ran a good event. Um, I would like to see that, that, that get taken care of, obviously. And uh, I gave I them like t- the exact list. Like I looked through my binder and I remember which holes were getting filled. Cause I was really excited. <laughs> and so I was like, listen, yeah. I, this is the exact list of stuff I'm missing. Mm-hmm. Like if you find it, but, Right. Well, I hope that gets taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so overall, uh, with the fan fest, uh, we're gonna just gonna go like take a look at the entire thing. Uh, so first, we'll start with the announcement of the fan fest. Um, so Sam, what are your thoughts on how they announced like the tickets going on sale? So I wasn't one of the people that thought that they announced it and then sold them too quickly. Um. I don't remember the turnaround. I actually thought there was like some number of days that was I thought there. there was like a week or two, to be honest. Yeah, maybe it was something like, hey, be on the lookout. They're going to go up for sale soon. I'm not exactly sure, but I remember having a good idea that they were going to go on sale, mm-hmm. and I was ready for it. Yeah, that being they said. They gave us like three days notice, like saying it's going to yeah. be. It was like, I think they talked about it at least a week, if not two weeks before, like, hey, they're going up soon. And then like a couple days before, they're like, all right, it's going to be on this day, uh, around like whatever time it was, and then like be ready so the problems that i'm going to talk about here are my own problems um my own issues that i have and keep in mind that they came about from my own expectations not that weren't falsely met by square enix um but that i set up for myself so they were in essence my fault um but so starting with the announcement is a good reason it's a good that we started here because the announcement came pretty close after uh, the Brave Envious event. And while I don't play that, I followed it very closely and was very jealous of everyone that went because it looked like such an amazing time. Uh, and I knew that when they announced the fan uh, fair, the first thing I did was I was a little upset because it was happening so soon. Like it was like within a month after they announced it that it was happening. Maybe it's just after, shy of a month or after a month. I'm not, I'm not quite sure to be honest with you, but I remember thinking like that's so soon. I'm not going to be able to get plane tickets. Um, and then James got plane tickets. And I was like, man, I really want to travel to an event with James. So I'm going to bite the bullet and go to this event. Now, part of – so moving past the announcement, the reason that I set myself up for such a, 
a letdown at the fanfare was that when it's sold out, right, what happens is, is you're going to have your competitive players that are on the ball. They are the ones that are messaging each, messaging each other right away. They're, they're constantly in communication. I don't know how many group chats you guys have, but I have at least like 15, 20 Final Fantasy chats. It's just ridiculous at this point. So once one of those starts buzzing off, they all start buzzing off. Okay, group tickets are up. Oh my gosh, guys, tickets are up. We need to buy them. And those are all almost exclusively comprised of competitive players. So what's going to happen when your competitive players are, are communicating so much? Those are going to people the, the people that are filling up your fanfare spots for the most part. So you have a casual event, which thousands of players are interested in, and you have to cap it at 125. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that, but it is what it is. That is the, the there's, there, there's nothing to say. It's not my choice, obviously. You know, Squeenix did the best they can. They want to make money. So if they could have done more, they would have done more. So let's assume that they did the best they can and that the event is going to be capped at 125. Now, this might lead to more field bads. I don't know, but I would have preferred a lottery system. Um, basically, what happened was if you were awake and not working at the time and you could register yourself, you got a ticket. In eight now, minutes. again, <laughs> in eight minutes, they sold out. Now, again, keep in mind, the people that are doing this are the people that are almost 100% competitive. Um, they're in these group chats. If they're not, they're people that are very um very regular part of these type of chats like like james lockwood um you know who's not gonna miss out on this type of thing so what ends up happening is you have thousands of fans but the people that first um registered are all competitive players so what does that mean that means your team events are filled up with competitive players your title uh for the most part will be competitive but since it's not a competitive event, it's where you're going to have the majority of your non-competitive players do a little better um, because it's not a, a really a supported um, format at the moment, right? So you're going to have your boss battles are going to be filled with competitive players. So, you know, your casual, let's see who can kill the most Viking, let's see who can get the most wins, who the most losses, are filled with competitive people. Those are the first people to join the stream, right? You're going to have your boss battle filled with competitive players. That part's probably a good thing. You're going to have your panel filled with competitive players. That part is going to be kind of like, hey, we want to know the answers to the tough questions um, that, that aren't really ready to answer, which is fair enough, right? Um, and then you're going to also have the fact that people are forced to listen to the panel. Now, I was 100% interested in the panel. You know, uh, Hobby Japan came a long way, gave, an, in my opinion, one of the best panels. Arby did an excellent job. Um, I would have missed it for the world. But forcing competitive players to play that when they could be grinding out matches is is just a, a non-starter for me. The other thing that we didn't talk about, and I'm, and I'm sad that I left it off the docket here, was that we didn't talk about the um, the trivia. Trivia was fun, but at, at some point in the trivia, basically when you're out, you just sat there and couldn't do anything but listen because you're out of trivia. Um, and it was like a one-shot you're out type deal. So you sat there for the next 30 minutes only listening to other people answer questions. Um, and you weren't allowed to go play or anything. You weren't allowed to go grind. The merch uh, table shut down during this. You had to just sit there and listen. These questions were so absurdly hard that almost <laughs> nobody would get them right almost ever. We weren't talking like just the questions that we saw at the reunion. We were talking like name the number of 7,000 power forwards in the game. That's one of the better questions because it's one of the few questions that had to do with Final Fantasy TCG. And also, the, you could get close but not exact, which a lot of them yes. were like, what's well, the name of most this of town the, in Final Fantasy IV where you met this NPC? It's like, oh my gosh. Right, yeah. So it's like so hard for people to get this. Like, at the fanfare, I would like to have seen the questions be all TCG related. I would have at least felt a shot at playing and doing well. The um, Or if... If there are going to be random questions about games like Final Fantasy XII that I don't necessarily care about, like let me go play some more matches and do some other things. But instead, I couldn't. I couldn't go buy anything. I couldn't go do anything, and so I had to just sit here and listen to this trivia, um, or leave. Like yeah, you could leave. Yeah, the room, or you could leave. You couldn't do anything else in the room. Right, and even then, leaving the room would probably feel very rare, uh, rude because right, right. all of the Hobby Japan people were at the back of the room near the door. Mm -hmm. So leaving 
was almost not optional either. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Now I'm not saying it very, was. I'm just saying that's those are those are the options they basically gave you. Yeah. So that felt very very rude. Um. So so like I said, the combination of the announcement happening so quickly, uh, which I thought was enough time, but then it's selling out so quickly instead of doing some sort of lottery system or having like a, Hey, we're going to, we're going to pre-sell 128. If that sells out, we'll look for another venue. We won't book it. We won't book the venue. Like I, I don't think they should book a venue until they have 128 and they say, okay, clearly we're going to open up more spots and find a new venue. Uh, so that being said, if you only have 120 spots, they're 25 and those spots are filled up immediately by a majority of competitive players then you lead to your team events being competitive. Your random battle is filled with competitive players who want to win any means necessary. Um, <clears throat> that type of thing. Your panel, the, the trivia thing, you're with a bunch of competitive players who really uh, don't care about a lot of these questions. They're not related to the game whatsoever. You have people in the room who had never even played a Final Fantasy who are really just fans of the TCG, and they basically had no shot. And well, I say basically, they literally had no shot. <laughs> You, you couldn't have even just randomly hard. guessed. They, it, they weren't all 50-50 questions once you got past the black and white uh, raise your card thing. We're talking like these these questions were very, very insane. How old is Vanille? You know, like nobody knows that she's 600 years old exactly or, or 639, whatever she is. There's not very many people that know her exact age. Rank the characters Terra, Yuna, Cloud, and Noctis from youngest to oldest. Um you just Zach had a great guess and was able to guess it, but he was already out at the time. But like nobody, nobody really knows that. You know the the five name the five judges in Final Fantasy twelve. I never played twelve. Like why do I have to sit here and listen to the trivia while everyone while they get to win awesome prizes like a foil stola? Like again, <clears throat> you have like Zach was saying earlier, you have. Uh, amazing prizes, very competitive prizes for things that you actually just have no shot at winning. Right. So as a TCG thing, that's the, that's the important focus of what you're saying is this is a TCG based event. It's like, if you go to the brave X, XVS event, I don't want trivia there about the TCG. I mean, I do. Cause but, I might actually well, have a chance at winning. Sure. Well, then that, but yeah, you know, it, bias, it wouldn't but, make any sense. And I'd be like, wow, that's really but dumb. The fan, yeah. But the fanfare, yeah. You want card based well, trivia like, more even so that the prizes again, just so heavily favor there's just a competitive mindset, but you don't have any chance. I mean, it almost feels the same in, you know, like the 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 random battles, for example. These anyone going for like the the most wins and they're not competitive doesn't have a shot against the people that are actually competitive at the game. Or you know, if you if you wanted the event to just be a uh, a casual event, you know what I would have liked to see is you get you have three players. Um, and you're randomly paired once you get there, like into teams, and then you have to build a deck or something. I don't know how that would work, or, or maybe you don't have to build a deck, but you have to come up with some sort of strategy. Um, but like just having it set up where you can pick your competitive team. It was you, myself, Muhammad, a team that I would enter in every event for the rest of the year. If I just because we didn't do well, I would still pick the same team over and over again for the rest of the year and feel 100% confident that we could take away any event, right? But like if you were just a random team of whatever nobody's and in round one you get paired against you know world competitors who (laughs) signed up for this event but not only that but like other teams teams that are very good have multiple crystal cup winners on the same team get buys the first round right and then it just it just doesn't make a lot of sense so starting from the announcement to the actual takeaway um i wasn't thrilled i think that it was fun i had a good time I don't think I would go again. And what I heard from people, I know that like everyone has a different perspective, but what I heard from the players that I've talked to felt similar. It, especially if the event is so close to competitive season, are we really going to like, like I actually gave up going to a crystal cup for this. And I'm not saying I didn't have fun. I had a good time. Right. Then, but and through I, all I, this, wish, it was I fun. wish I was going to Kansas instead. Yeah. And it was a very fun event. That's, I mean, that's what it is. But yeah, what okay. you said is pretty, pretty accurate. That's how I feel. I, I think my conditions for going again are a little more lax. Like I would just want uh, higher attendance. Uh, otherwise, I may not be as interested. But yeah. Yeah, I think I think Sam pretty much covered all the bases. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now what just said. I know that was a, I know that was a rant. But hey, look, I was just, you know, how I'm, I'm, I'm honest. You know. 
I Again, think. those were a lot of those expectations were myself um, setting myself up for failure. It was it was I set those expectations. That wasn't on Square Enix. That wasn't any person's fault. It was myself. But those expectations were set up because the event sold out so quickly, because Brave Envious did so well, and and frankly, you know, there were nothing but competitive players there. And I don't mean that literally. Obviously, there were non-competitive players there. But what ninety percent? You say one out of 10 maybe was not competitive. We recognize a lot of people. I recognize just about everybody. <laughs> yeah, I think I would definitely love to go next year. Uh, obviously, we'd need more uh, cap space on how many players can squeeze into the venue. Um, and then I know we touched on it a little bit earlier, but the tickets were not like announced like, hey, they're going on sale at 10 a.m. on this date. It was like, it was like, hey, they're going to be available soon. And then randomly in the week, it was just like 10 a.m. Here they are. So I would like to see that be a little bit more organized. I feel like maybe I saw a post at a fortuitous time where it was like, oh, hey, they're going to go on sale at this time today. And I was like, oh, shoot. OK. And then I... But it was it was that day. Yeah. And so you had to be ready for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So like if I'm going to like a, say, like see a concert or something like it'll be like tickets are going on sale this date, this time. It'll right. be like a, a few weeks in advance or at least like something like that. Maybe. Right. Yeah. Which I think the just uh, I think practice makes perfect with that kind of stuff. And I think next year the event will be bigger, better, more organized. Yeah. If it's more attendance, two days uh, or there's like a special guest I really want to see. I think it was, at least one of those three would have to happen for me to want to go next year. I would I would if I want to go next year, I would like to see it happen um, soon after Nationals. Or like have nationals start on like a Friday, and then Saturday, and then have like a fanfare on Sunday where we all get together and have a good time. Um, where you know there's no, I, I wouldn't want it the other way around. I wouldn't want fanfare first because people are going to be stressed. They're trying to hide their deck. They want to test their decks. They don't want to, you know. But having fanfare after nationals, before worlds, or just after worlds would be fine. I actually think that we're cutting it too close into February when if competitive season starts in March, so that when I'm budgeting money it's very hard for me to budget additional income this closely to go to fanfare and then another crystal cup yeah i I would also even this is just like a random suggestion but maybe combine fanfare with like the reunion event and maybe have it all in florida in january next year i don't know oh yeah having 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 one thing be a fanfare and then the other be a reunion like i guess they kind of overlap with each other but having it be two days period yeah, would like be great we, like, if Square Enix only had to cover one of those days, you know, and then the community covered the other day. That would be fantastic. That's what I'm saying. I figured we could probably at least get 200 people down to Florida. I mean, we might not be able to get like Kageyama and like the Hobby Japan guys, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah, just a suggestion. Um, but, RB can be a boss. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you guys want to comment down below, leave us your thoughts on uh, the fanfare or is it fan fest? Which one? Fan. Fanfare. 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 <laughs> I, thought was, I, thought, I thought it was fan fest too, but it is fanfare. It's fanfare, yeah. E- either way, leave your uh, your thoughts on it, guys. What did you like? What did you dislike? Will you go again next year? Um, once again, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. We'll see you next time.